Welcome to Critical Junction, episode 30. I'm Mark. Hello, my name is Luke. I'm Jill. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. This is our, uh, or happy holidays, I guess. Here it goes. Oh, oh, the conflict has already begun. Satisfying solstice. <laughs> this is our Christmas special episode, or holiday special episode, depending on which side of the spectrum you're on. Uh, according to the religious right, however, Christmas is under siege by liberal progressives intent on taking Christ out of the holiday season and replacing it with their own secular celebrations in order to become more politically correct. So in 2004, right-wing blowhard and Fox infotainment personality Bill O'Reilly recited his version of the so-called War on Christmas controversy as the subject of his quote-unquote talking points memo during a televised broadcast, saying, quote, All over the country, Christmas is taking flack. In, Ven in Denver this past weekend, no religious floats were permitted in the holiday parade there. In New York City, Mayor Bloomberg unveiled the holiday tree, and no Christian Christmas symbols are allowed in the public schools. Federated department stores, that is Macy's, have done away with a Christmas greeting, Merry Christmas. Despite the phrase Happy Holidays being, being in use for more than 100 years, the religious right in general and Christian alarmist in particular in the U.S., and to a lesser extent in Canada, insist Christmas and the freedom of religion are under attack. Now, according to Snopes, however, the evidence suggests there is no actual conspiracy to erase Christmas and destroy American civilization in the process, although some people clearly perceive it to be the case. Belief in a quote-unquote war on Christmas seems to go hand-in-hand hand with a belief that the United States is a fundamentally Christian nation whose social fabric is weakened or torn by religious diversity and secularism. Ironically, if there ever was a war on Christmas, it was waged by Puritans in the U.S. in 1659 when lawmakers in Massachusetts outlawed anything to do with Christmas celebrations out of fear that such festivals were superstitious, superstitiously, pardon, <laughs> superstitiously <laughs> kept in other countries would be to the great dishonor of God and offense to others. End quote. There are no laws today forbidding Christmas celebrations. So where does this alarmism come from, and why is it so popular with the right? Hmm. Fear. Fear. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, um, it's like uh, it, it seems like it's the. Uh, Christian right or, or, or just uh, the, the, the cultural Christianity in the states that's losing its complete uh, domination and hegemony on the, on the continent's culture. Um, they're, they're just losing the hegemony because society is getting a little bit more diverse and inclusive uh, and they take, they take any erosion of that complete dominance as a threat to themselves. So the loss of their identity, like they're identifying with the Not just their identity, but they're like, they're like security, they're complete... Uh, right, right, right. Well, I'm, I'm including Their complete insulation from having to deal with anything different, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because uh, the, the, the hilarious thing to me is that this, uh, this, this whole thing comes from... Um, Mainly from like businesses that want to have that want to make uh, uh, messages and signage that uh, that sort of participates in the, the 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 seasons kind of cheer and stuff like that and and attract people that way, but they want to attract as wide a swath of people as possible, and they also don't want to have to change their signs maybe every two days, so they right. say happy Just holidays like because there's. We're, we're, even if we're just talking about Christians here, we're talking about Christmas and New Year's, and we're talking about general holidays in terms of people being off work, their yeah. holidays. So it, it's it's like a complete bullshit thing to begin with that this is this is some kind of specific offense to Christianity when it actually grows out of uh, uh, catering to. The, the the Christian season and and or, or the Christian holidays that are happening, right? No, well, um, like the the entire idea of the war on Christmas is you know it's not a thing. Um, according to an article I found here just a little while ago this week when doing research on the episode, the uh, the war on Christmas originates not with the uh, right wing media pundit but with the ultra conservative and anti UN and racist John Birch Society. The JBS distributed a pamphlet in 1959 titled There Goes Christmas, which posted a communist plot to deprive right-thinking Americans of the right to celebrate the holiday. The right to celebrate the holiday. Yeah, the pop culture version of the war on Christmas is a mix of conservative propaganda and pushback against inclusivity. Um, so yeah, it was all, like originally this the 
war on Christmas idea was, you know, uh, there was, it, it was a racist thing. It was an anti-UN thing, apparently. Yeah. So, like, th- there's no evidence to suggest there was a war on Christmas. Like, what stores are putting out Christmas decorations earlier and earlier, and, like, I don't, I don't understand why people are suggesting that Merry Christmas is not socially acceptable. Right, I don't really understand the threat. That's the, here. that's the funny thing. Um, uh, I keep hearing uh, people make the, the, the supposed counter argument or the, 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 the devil's advocate uh, uh, argument that um, uh, the reason why they feel attacked is because some people are apparently offended when you say Merry Christmas. I have never seen anyone claim offense mm-hmm. from hearing Merry Christmas. It's like they want to pretend there's a, some kind mm-hmm. of equivalency and some kind of parody there when there absolutely is not. It's, it's again, this kind of projection that seems endemic to, right, right, right. to, to, to uh, um, reactionaries, right? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a very small minority of people raising the alarm bells about, you know, inclusivity being a, an attack on the right to celebrate their particular holiday. You know, yeah. we, we never see, for example, like it, it, we never see it from the Muslim community. They, they're, they're not, we're, they're not saying, you know, Merry our holiday. Fuck, it's, fuck it's, Jesus! It's, yeah, yeah. It, it all comes well, to, I, hell, I, I, with, I, to hell with baby Christ. <laughs> I, I, I've encountered Muslim acquaintances, or or, or just uh, uh, people like in a, in a cab or something that'll, mm-hmm. or, or 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 just on the street or at work and they'll say Merry Christmas if Merry Chris- if Christmas is coming up right. and people are celebrating Christmas. It's mm-hmm. not a it's not a problem to say Merry Christmas. Yeah. Even from non Christians. Like I, ju- I, wanna, um, I just want to circle back to the um, the irony of this war on Christmas idea coming from Christians because like I said, in, in sixteen fifty nine yeah. the Puritans yeah. outlawed Christmas celebrations because they thought it would be an affront to God. They thought it would be offensive because all this joyousness, yeah. that's not Christianity is what's supposed to, you know, that's not Christianity at its core. It's yeah. about suffering and death. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the outlaw... Which Christmas. it was at that time. Especially. Well, it's like, it, it goes back to, like, um, how uh, Christians used to call anyone who weren't part of the mainline or orthodox Catholic uh, church... Um, they used to call them atheists. Like, yeah. if, if you're just not part of the right Christian sect, mm-hmm. you can believe in God and Jesus all you want. You're or still an atheist. Or you're, or you're just according. incorrect. Kind of thing, right, right. You're not yeah, one of if us. You're, so. If you're incorrectly doing the religion, then you're an atheist. <laughs> if you're not Catholic, you're an atheist, and you're going to hell. Yeah. 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 So, like, the war on Christmas, if there is one, originated with Christians, declaring yeah. war on other Christians who aren't doing it properly. Who aren't doing it right. Like, they're... they're they're, God damn it, Kevin Bacon! You can't dance here. <laughs> you can't dance here. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Them damn kids and their rock and roll, their eye boxes and their X phones. Well, in a sense, to take offense, there has to be a, a, a sense of a threat, even mm-hmm. if that threat is non-existent. And, yeah. and we're suggesting that that uh, that the origins of of so this what? Is... But what you get is like in this society, you've got like this. Uh, this almost complete domination of the of the culture and just demographically most people uh the overwhelming majority of people are christians of some kind of some flavor um and yet it's not it's not even we're not even seeing like uh um uh like we're, we're nowhere near seeing a case where where uh that is actually not gonna be at least a plurality. It isn't necessarily um, Christians being the majority. It's it's Christmas being the most popular holiday. Right, right, right. And there, like, th- there is no organized attack against that. Well, would we suggest that uh, that Christmas is so popular because it is marketed so? Yeah, like, it's, like yeah, that's that's kind of Coca Cola has created yeah. this this image of Santa Claus in red mm-hmm. and has yeah. popularized it. And, and actually, I, I heard that uh, that um, uh, um, what's uh, what's his name that wrote uh, the, the A Christmas Carol? Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, that guy. No, no. A- Andy Dick. <laughs> no, no, who's the guy that, that wrote A Christmas Carol? And he, he wrote like David Copperfield and. Uh, uh, <laughs> There, there's been a lot Tale of, of two wine. cities. There, the Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. There we go. There's been a lot of wine flowing this evening. So uh, so apparently yeah. he's he's <laughs> almost he's almost singularly Charles responsible Dickens. for 
the way we celebrate Christian nowadays. Mm. Uh, like the, the, the Christmas uh, that was going on back in the Puritan days right. uh, uh, 150 years uh, before was, was actually quite different apparently from, from what we knew more in the 20th century mm. and late uh, 19th century. And so when he w wrote A Christmas Carol... He would a he actually came to the states and did like a tour of the states, and he would do uh, the characters a voice. Acted out on stage he would do like a that. voice yeah, yeah, reading right, right. of his of his book yeah. to basically just spread around that entire kind of uh, uh, um, what uh, idea of Christmas? idea of Christmas. Yeah. So there's there's that on top of the whole idea that you know in Christianity Jesus was supposed to have, supposed to have been born on December twenty fifth. Which is, you know, patently false. The like, the original Catholic Church placed the celebration of Christmas on December twenty fifth to coincide with the solstice celebrations that other pagan communities were celebrating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it was to, in order to facilitate the amalgamation of these yeah. other the other cultures into the. It was dominant. it was basically to insidiously supplant yeah. the the, right, the exactly. existing pagan uh, traditions. Yeah, the, the church was gradually assimilating other cultures, and in order to facilitate their introduction into our society, to quote from Star Trek, they would co-opt. They co their, their holidays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they placed the birth of Jesus around where these other cultures were celebrating their their solstice celebrations. So there's your Christmas idea. You know, it was it's kind of funny. I don't know why I did that voice just then. <laughs> it was good, though. That was your Christmas voice. Oh, it was Christmas Hanky voice. the Christmas Poop. Hank, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there, there are a lot of myths celebrating, or celebrating, surrounding the celebration of Christmas. It's just, it's, it's like you said, the Charles Dickens thing being one of them. Yeah. It's really funny. Well, now, I'm thinking of the Trump thing. I mean, there is political motivation mm. in terms of keeping the people oh. separated, right? Mm. Then we need the government. Divide and the conquer. Divide and conquer. Yeah, the divide and conquer thing, right? I mean, yeah. it, it just makes sense. So it's it's all it's about money and, and yeah, trying I mean, to nobody, get people to hate each other. Nobody had actually the brought up that. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, nobody had brought up the, the the war on Christmas thing this year until Trump just a couple of days ago. He declared the war on Christmas that, won yeah. by hit me out. Yeah, he said, "I'm." I'm I'm bringing back Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, so I'm bringing because, back Merry Christmas. Because apparently people nobody love, was allowed. People love, it. people love it when I say Merry Christmas to them. Yeah, so I'm saying it to everybody. It's, it's I'm amazing. Saying it I'm saying Merry Christmas, and people love it. They just, it's amazing. It's I'll, great. I'll vote for you next time, Mark. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> See, I, if you vote for me, that'd be amazing. It'd be great. It's fantastic. I'm getting a lot of All votes. All the smartest people are the voting smartest for people me. are voting. I have the smartest words, the best words, <laughs> including Merry Christmas, Jill. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Luke. Uh, sweet, 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 sweet yeah. baby Jesus day. Happy, yeah, so happy, no, happy. Like, happy. I, I haven't been. I didn't follow with the the Trump fiasco about Merry Christmas. So, if do you, one of you, have you, either of you heard? Well, that? I think he summed it up. He just got a, got got on the airwaves and went, uh, "Hey, I'm bringing Christmas back." Like, yeah, like yeah. It's Justin Timberlake bringing sexy back kind of he, thing. You know, like he it was basically ever gone. pretended it was a thing when actually it hadn't been a thing this year. It, it was a thing during his election campaign. Like he, that, yeah, yeah, he had brought it up uh, yeah. during his election. But is it not a thing because he made it a thing? Well, that's it's a, not a, yeah, it's no, not he a made thing. it a thing. Mm -hmm. like, it, the, the whole the idea was dying out because Bill O'Reilly just kind of took a backseat to other bullshit on quote unquote Fox News. Um, so it was it was dying out. It wasn't like mm -hmm. as much of an issue as it used to be. But Trump came back on and said, "I'm I'm going to bring back Merry Christmas. It'd be great. Yeah, just watch me." But I, I like before the term "war on Christmas" was coined, there was already this uh, the, this bullshit narrative in like right wing talk radio mm -hmm. and and uh, and among conservatives that when you see happy holidays in stores, it's some kind of offensive uh, um, uh, offensive insult to mm -hmm. to Chris, to Christians because it's like erasing Christ from Christmas. Right. Uh, by by not saying explicitly and exclusively Merry Christmas, yeah. Uh, so when you when, when you use all of uh, if you if you dare to make use of all of the the variety of um, of expressions and the whole lexicon of the season by by invoking the Yule and and the the, the season by saying seasons greetings and happy holidays generally so the, the, then you're making a, a specific offense to the, the one the use of thing. the use of happy holidays isn't a new thing 
No, it's, exactly. It's been around since at least the 1800s. Like there, there was an article that appeared in the Philadelphia Inquirer on December 5th, 1863, for example. There was one in the Duluth News Tribune on January 6th, 1890. Happy holidays. Yeah. Uh, December 21st, 1890 again in, uh, what is this? The Macon Telegraph. That's because reasonable people with brains understand that there are several holidays during this time they of year. They all coincide and, around the same time. And that, uh, you know, days off are are considered holidays. Yeah. Uh, and we have several of them, even if we were only c- celebrating Christmas. Yeah, so it, this, this idea that it, you yeah. know, liberals are propagating the... The dismantling of Christmas as a, as the holiday celebration is it's patently false. I think in the Snopes article they talk also about uh, um, about Henry Ford, yeah. the the uh, the you know the guy that started the nineteen twenty one the Ford Motor Company and uh, and invented uh, yeah uh, the the uh, the assembly line right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he brought up this idea that uh, that the fact that Merry Christmas isn't exclusively being wished to people during this time of the year, he he was he was the one that brought up the idea that uh, this is an attack on on Christians and Christianity. And yeah, uh, I find it so strange because really, uh, what people are attempting to do by saying Happy Holidays is be more inclusive, which yeah. in and of itself is more Christian. Like yeah, in, exactly. In terms yeah. of the true true it's about like spreading of, the cheer and the warmth, spreading the cheer, and so it's like. Uh, it's like they've gotten lost in the symbols, but don't understand the meaning of the symbols anymore. Like, yeah. uh, like there's there's this Jesuit priest who put out a video about uh, you know the whole idea of the war on Christmas, and he said as part of the video, and I quote here: "More important than just saying Merry Christmas is to live it. That is to live as Jesus did. To live as a life of simplicity, a life of generosity, a life of service, a life of welcome and hospitality to others." And that's the conversation we should be having. Right. And so, and there is none of that. It's actually the opposite conversation that Christians are having uh, that are threatened by the loss of this uh, or the use of happy holidays rather than yeah. Merry Christmas. Well, what, what do you like think that. it is that, that, that they're threatened by, by, with people saying happy holidays? Do you think they're losing that sense of, of identity? Well, yeah, that's, this is why I brought up the identity idea first. Mm-hmm. Like, their identity is threatened. They don't want any change. Any change is bad change kind of thing, right? But, uh, I mean, I think it's multifaceted as well, right? Mm-hmm. It is someone that's implanting the idea in their mind and stuff like that as well. But, I mean, obviously it's coming from a place of, of I'm going to say, insecurity, you know? Mm-hmm. Whether it delves back as far as, like, fear of death and stuff like that and fear of change and all that stuff, sure. Right. But uh, it's just a big crock of shit. It's 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 getting lost in in a symbol, but but forgetting what that symbol means. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you know, you're not you're not saying you love me properly, and you don't mean it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like it, mm-hmm. it, it it doesn't make any sense. This all assumes though that this is um, like a, a grassroots cultural phenomenon where where Christians are. Spontaneously feeling attacked when they read the words "season's greetings" or "happy holidays," and, and, and it it could be that this is actually like a, a coordinated propaganda campaign right. that's actually put out there every year by the 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 elites running the actual partisan. Yeah, um, and that would make a know, lot more sense because, like as you said, I've never encountered anyone that actually takes a, takes offense. Mm-hmm. To, to a Merry Christmas. I've, I've wished someone a Merry Christmas that was not Christian, and they went, oh, well, we don't, we don't celebrate Christmas. Well, I think and then that's I just went, okay, well, happy holidays, whatever. You know, it doesn't yeah, matter. And they're like, yeah, great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's Smiles. what the, the, the Snopes article was getting at. Like, there, there is no coordinated attempt to undermine the idea of Christmas from anyone. It's just it's no. a propaganda. But effort. that's then there's the, that projection thing. So there's no coordinated attempt to actually uh, uh, squash Christmas, and in fact, it's quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's all about actually... Actually, cashing in on uh, 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 not all about, but at least from from a, a dominant part of our culture, cashing in in a consumeristic kind of way right. yeah. is a big part of, of 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 Christmas, and that requires pushing the holiday, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so the projection comes in in that they're saying that there's a coordinated effort by the left to squash it. When the opposite is the case, there's actually a coordinated effort by specifically Republicans and um, and uh, 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 the the the, the right wing elite to actually put out propaganda to make Christians feel attacked 
by the left so that so that any advances by 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 liberal progressive kind of uh, um, kind of policies are squashed at the grassroots level, yeah. even though that grassroots is totally carpet bagged mm -hmm. or sandbagged. What it seems humorous is that uh, that those claiming an assault on Christmas seem to be the ones that are doing the assault. It's very much in line with uh, the way Christians have been throughout the history of uh, uh, like what, what people have done with, with, with Christianity. The mm -hmm. bad stuff. The wars. Yet again, another war. You know? the, the Crusades. <laughs> and the Crusades. <laughs> and uh, the burning of the witches, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it always seems to... They cry prosecution a lot when they're the ones doing the... Persecution, sorry. When they're the ones persecuting others who don't believe the same way they do. It, it, it seems ironically humorous. Well, it is. It's very ironic. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously a tangent of a very lost... But hypocrisy is, is inherently ironic. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> ironic doesn't necessarily mean funny. It's, <laughs> to me, hypocrisy is, is not so much funny as just completely lamentable. And <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> We're sad. We're sad for yeah, Christmas I'm sorry. now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, I don't know. I don't know what to, like, yeah. Where's this coming from? Okay, I think at at the where's this coming from? I think can be answered with another question, and uh, you know, is the U.S. a Christian nation or is it at its heart a secular nation? And if we can answer that question, I think we'd get to you know some. We can say that it's symbolically Chris, uh, Christian, but in that sense, uh, the the true meaning of Christianity is is I think lost there, and yeah. it's not. Well, the, the reason I ask that is it's, because it's it, we see this. Predominant. So so we, well, hold on. The reason I ask it is because we see the war on Christmas being more uh, highlighted in the U.S. than we do here or anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Like the yeah the American. Christian right-wing fundamentalists are the one to cry foul about. You know, we're under, we're being persecuted by the liberal progressives all right. the time. The left is against the right, and the right are yeah. against the left. And yeah. I've never seen the, the the word progressive be used as a pejorative anywhere else than in the U.S. Like they they want to enforce progress, and and they want you know like how, how is progress a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, on 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 that specific point, I think there's like some. Um, some skepticism or or just a uh, um, a doubt as to the clarity of that term. Like I, I, I think a lot of people just think that um, this is kind of like a, a, a more of a weaselly term that's being that's being used because it has positive connotations, but it doesn't really mean anything specific. Like what? What progress. does it? What does it mean? Progress, you know. Right, like, there would have to be like, a set goal. Like, like, uh, like uh, heading towards. Like, something. I think, I think, uh, I think, the idea from a lot of uh, conservatives is that is that the use of the term progressive by the by liberals and by the left is is kind of um, uh, uh, kind of a dirty trick because they're basically saying that that liberal policies are. Are considered more forward-facing and more the future of, of what things should should be, while they while conservative conservatives would think that conservative policies are actually mm. where the future should go, and so progress would be getting more conservative. Which is what, like I don't understand that because uh, conservative ideas, you know, by the very nature of the of the term conservative, means hanging on to something. Right, clinging to something. Clinging to the conserving. past. Yeah, conserving ideas that are rooted. In some some ideal, you know, the it, the 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 conservative ideal is fundamentally at its at its very core rooted in the past. You're right, and the ideal isn't a solid thing. Yet they're claiming there is some sort of a solid thing that they are therefore protecting. The like idea of the, sort of yeah, the idea of the good old days and the way things used to be done and all that. You know, mm -hmm. what what were the good old days? The days when. When women weren't allowed to vote. <laughs> yep. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. Like the the yeah the good old days when blacks were were slaves. <laughs> were segregated. Yeah. At the Put back of the is that the good old days to you? Like, what are you talking about? And how is progress against those types of of of, of ideas not a good thing? But you're right though that that each each side, if we're splitting things into sides, would have a different idea of what progress is. Right. And 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 I don't think either of them has anything laid out on the table as to what it's actually pointing at or claiming. Uh, this yeah. is what we want and this is what we don't want, sort of thing. Except yeah, for well, I think encountering it, things at the time that they feel threatened by and going, not this, not this. Naturally, know. people think it's arbitrary and subjective when someone. Proclaims their their idea or their goals or their agenda to be progressive. Um, 
it, it's 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 kind of it's kind of like just a kind of rhetoric, right? Is it like I mean, there's there, how how do you objectively say that one I one policy agenda is progressive rather than another? Yeah, and you can't. Yeah. Like and, unless well, someone. Yeah. Unless someone has painted the picture and gone, this is where we're going, and I'm pointing at it, and this will lead us there, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If I were to, if I were to say, uh, a life of non-attachment leads to to non-suffering, then that's right. pointing at something, kind of thing. But that's... well, I mean, there's two ways that things that things progress, or rather, that things change. Things change by moving towards th- something, or things change by moving away, moving away from something, or, mm-hmm. or, or un- undoing or, or but demolishing the, and in a, this a case, structure or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that exists in this case, like, not doing it's, it's moving away from, from not allowing certain individuals the same rights as everybody else. Like that, that's what progressivism is. Like we need to progress as a society away from ideas that would originally restrict us or members of this of society or our culture you know so progression uh, progression towards further freedoms for you could say freedoms you could say i think i was trying to give it a term or sure something. yeah but uh, allowing people the same opportunities right to to live the life they want to pursue right you know that that's what we should be moving towards we should be moving away from ideas that restrict that Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I say should, you know. Should. But here you're trying to define what you feel is a progression. Sure. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Like in my view, that's what we as a culture should be moving towards. And, and so away from. you would be considered left wing, I guess. I, well, I consider myself left of center. I'm not like a, a leftist because I I don't agree with taking the extreme of any any side of the argument because mm-hmm. that just then you're just automatically. Uh, doing away with the other side, and you should, like you're descending into dogmatism, yeah. and you're abdicating your, it's, it's, your your reason. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe in ideology. I think you know we need evidence over ideology, in my view. Like if the so evidence, I've heard, if, I've heard. Well, yeah, if the evidence points us in a certain <laughs> prove direction, prove it. Yeah, prove it. <laughs> if the evidence points us in a certain direction, I think we should follow that evidence. You know, because an an idea that's not founded on facts or based in reality is fallacious to a certain extent. Mm. It's like uh, Hitchens' razor, right? Hitchens Anything razor. that can be asserted without uh, can be sufficient dismissed evidence, without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Yeah. So if you're just going to espouse an idea without anything to back that idea up, it's bullshit. You know, like you you need something to found your ideas on. You need if and the and ideology is the opposite of that. Ideology is just espousing ideas for their own sake because you're shouting it loud enough for everyone mm-hmm. else to jump on board and follow it. You know, the the Conservative Party is really good at that. And in my opinion, so I'm, is the NDP. To me, at stoking movements. Yeah, stoking. They're, yeah. They're well, all, the, the funny thing is, like the extreme left are also. That's exactly it. That's why I can't identify point. with the extreme of one end of the spectrum or another because mm-hmm. it's it's ideology over evidence, and I can't I can't get behind that. Like if it's you, also it's also all about decontextualization mm-hmm. about about uh, um, yeah a, a, about trying these one size fits all kind of uh, kind of solutions uh, to to problems, you mm-hmm. know, like or, or or applying a what size one size fits all. Uh, uh, judgment. Um. Religion tried that. Religion tried to espouse that this is the size that fits everyone, and you need to get behind it, or you will go to hell. And we will ensure that you follow th- follow this by the sword. You know, mm-hmm. we will destroy you and your culture if you don't fall in line behind our one size fits all solution yeah. to the problem of culture. Yeah, and we've talked about this with like the uh, the political correctness episode and the. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Black Lives Matter uh, episode and stuff like that, um, uh, but uh, I mean it's something that happens all across the the spectrum. It, it's 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 um, it's well known that the right also uh, is uh, uh, is especially strong on uh, like dominating talk radio mm-hmm. to kind of disseminate uh, these uh, these sort of uh, pre-written talking points to, right. to make sure that so there's a propaganda. common agenda uh, and, to, and to make sure that anybody who's conservative-minded to begin with is also 
uh, kind of marching in lock, in lockstep and has and has the, the 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 proper kind of rhetorical training to be talking the same way so that the the same so not to be thinking are, but are to just advanced. be addressing and saying what you're yeah, supposed and to you're say you're seeing the exact same thing as as what was big on talk radio in the 90s just happening now with uh, Facebook mm-hmm. and with social media it they're the ones echo chambers where people it, repeat the, the right same is where idea. is the right is where you're you're really seeing a lot of these uh, like forward 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 chain mail kind of things and don't uh, think about it just forward the idea yeah just yeah 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 we see yeah. a lot of like you said Facebook the social media in general, but Facebook in particular, you know, it, it does create echo chambers where you're, people who cling to a certain idea just repeat it without thinking about it. You know, like, oh my god, repost, repost, repost. Well, I'm going to go right ahead and say clinging to any idea, uh, or most ideas, mm-hmm. are, are generally not very healthy and, and generally lead to suffering and the collapse of that idea. What do you, what do you identify as suffering? What do you mean by suffering? Uh, clinging to ideas. Clinging to ideas. <laughs> It all leads That's to it all circular. leads to it, it all leads to suffering. <laughs> Some yeah. kind of tautology there, Luke. What do you what, yeah. what do you what do you understand as suffering? Why does clinging to an idea lead to suffering? Well, let's what, if the, wanna, what if the idea? I want to is, establish what we mean by suffering yeah, first. Possibly not gonna, all ideas, because I could say, for example, uh, developing compassion. Uh, so that's an idea. It, that like, is an idea. You're so right. obviously there has to be certain ideas that are sort of in inherently in laudable. Or in a sense, though, uh, that idea uh, good. can also transcend other ideas in the sense like there isn't a philosophy for it. You would have to almost abandon philosophy to encompass compassion all along sort of thing, if that makes sense. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure which ideas to cling to and which ones not to cling to. So I try not to cling to any of them just because that's the way that I... So Martin, I, I favor. Yeah. So, so you wanted him to define yeah, suffering. I, I want to know what you when, what do you understand by suffering? What is suffering? <laughs> How would I define suffering? Mm-hmm. Eh? Jesus. Well, I think that it's important. It's an important definition to have before you engage in the conversation of what leads to that. Okay. Well, I could say uh, a sense of of uh, incompleteness, sadness, the negative, the negative feelings, and things like this, and and further attachment to those negative feelings. Um, so who gets to determine what is considered a negative feeling and what isn't? Well, that would be, I suppose, the individual. If okay. I were to go, I, I am sad right now, but I feel that this sadness will I will not cling to and, mm. and I will move on to other things, then it's not so much a sadness as a, as a passing, fleeting thing that I'm not attached to. Mm. Um, so therefore, I'm not suffering too so, badly in it. So suffering could be seen as subjective. Well, Or is there like an objective ideal that we should be moving away from in order to avoid suffering. Here this would be attaching something to something if you're to identify objective and subjective like that. Well, I'm I'm, I'm trying trying to establish like how do we distinguish between what is a negative emotion which we shouldn't attach ourselves to versus something that we should be moving away from, you know? Right, right. Well, for example, something to move away from would maybe be, you know, hating people, feeling angry towards towards people, sure. things like that, you know? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm like, going to... Uh, obviously, I can, that I can would agree propagate with that. Like, yeah, further, yeah, yeah. more of that. Sure, but I, I agree with that on the surface. But, I like, ultimately, what is it that makes that something we need to move away from? Like why is that objectively something that we need to not espouse or not embrace? I, I think it would really just be human, human uh, in a sense, uh, I was going to say comfort, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, it's, I don't think it's comfort because the aim isn't necessarily comfort. I think that that's what we've aimed towards. I yeah. think we've mistaken uh, human comforts as something to, to aspire towards right. as if, but I think that that's a misinterpretation of what comfort is, and we're very uncomfortable with being yeah. comfortable. Just because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I, I usually can I, you reduce it to something as simple as like anything that that hinders sustainable uh, um, uh, uh, living. Well, see, here's you know, the thing: like, 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 I, I embrace an idea of secular morality in that morality, according to my definition, is that which leads to the well-being of conscious entities or conscious beings right the so well-being of yeah, yeah so you yeah. have to define this well-being see that's the thing well-being sure, yeah. just well, well-being you know well-being can be defined as for example health is generally preferable to illness or education is generally preferable to ignorance right or you know happiness is generally preferable to suffering like to me that is when, when we say generally preferable, do we mean statistically most people prefer one to the other? Is that what we mean? Like, a, like does it ultimately boil down to a subjectivity? Uh, I think of? it's a mix of both. 
Like, because subjectively, again, most people would prefer to be healthy than yeah. to be ill. Mm-hmm. Or, generally speaking, you know, subjectively, most people would prefer to know things than not. But there's, there's, there are always exceptions to that, right? I'm, but, kinda, I'm, I'm thinking about um, um, uh, crime and punishment, uh, where the 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 i the the idea of the book is that the guy commits this murder and his his suffering he has suffering because he's uh because he's not paying for his crime mm-hmm. um and so he needs he 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 actually has to has to like he he needs to get the the the, the retribution against him the 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 punishment the suffering of the punishment to get rid of the suffering of the the, the guilt or, mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so there's like a, a an ironic thing there where 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 the suffering that 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 happens in the punishment for something in uh, in paying for something that's actually a desirable suffering. Right. You know, right. like so 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 all of a sudden, w- l- but. Suffering so is, is no longer there, something that's preferable to right. not suffering. Mm-hmm. Like, but is I, he being immoral in that desire? Is what it comes down to, right? I think, it, like his his desire to suffer in order to make amends for what he's done mm-hmm. is in itself a moral act, right? Because he wants to he wants to atone for that. Yeah, you know, it's the it, the atonement means at its core that he wants to have not made the other people suffer as a result of his actions. So his actions are therefore moral in wanting to be punished for them, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so there's uh, uh, an opposite of suffering that happens in the... Uh, the atonement? In the, the doing something moral. Yeah. Even if the doing something moral um, sort of... Uh, paradoxically involves seeking a kind of suffering. Sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, there, are, there are a lot of layers to this moral question. Yeah. I feel like we're touching on something, though, here, in, in the sense that uh, what exactly are we pointing at that we can see as, uh, let's say we were talking about progression earlier mm-hmm. sort of thing, uh, and I was suggesting this uh, um, trying to ease ease suffering, and so then we have to define suffering and stuff right. like that. And, I, and I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that I don't think we can know what we want we only really know when we're there in front of it sort of thing if we want it to, uh, but uh, well, the, you know, the, the idea of, of that uh, you know we want to be happy mm-hmm. rather than sad isn't necessarily true that's almost a misunderstanding of how happy and sad work you can't you can't have one without the other mm-hmm. uh, the, they're a balancing act in and of themselves right so I don't know if that's necessarily true though it's can, not can necessarily you, can you true, be happy but, without being sad I don't know but what I mean is that it's more it, it becomes more about because I, I guess I guess I'm realizing as I, as I as I age that that I, I I'm, I'm pointing I feel like I'm pointing at something and I don't know what it is sort of thing and and I brought up this idea of not suffering and so I think that it is the, the, the grasping at things. And right now we're grasping at things, and it's causing suffering in this podcast. But why does it, why does it necessarily, why would it need, but why it's does also it lead causing to a satisfaction, though? right? Because yes. uh, the, 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 I think the striving for something or, or. The satisfying of desire leads to an elimination of that desire. And I don't think that's the case. Think, why not, think, about, think about sex. If, we, if I go out and have sex, it doesn't get rid of that desire to have sex. It satisfies the immediate desire. Just the immediate, and then that, that moment passes, and then we want to have sex again. And in fact, having sex leads to having more sex. Not necessarily. The des- well, for myself, me having sex, let's say I'm having great sex, mm-hmm. I am then going to have, or want to have, more great sex. But and to, that will propagate itself. But to, to argue from the specific to, a, to the general is fallacious. Well, you, you can't take... Fellatio. Sex, <laughs> love it. <laughs> love kind of it. Set myself up for that one, but like you, you can't, you can't take one example of something and apply it to the general. No, you're, you're right. You're whole. right. You're right. Like, but we're so, speaking almost symbolically at all times. In, in yeah, a sense, right? but but you know, satisfying the desire, satisfy. It's a tautology, but satisfying the desire satisfies that satisfies that desire. You know, and why does that necessarily lead to suffering? I, but what I'm saying is, I, why, I why think do that attachments lead to suffering? In that, according to that viewpoint, 
or that world. I, I, I'm going to suggest that it's the desiring itself that's something that, that can be... Uh, we can cultivate a manner of controlling our desires, mm-hmm. and that would mm-hmm. alleviate suffering. It's our actual desiring and, and getting and suffering not getting Suffering is inherently to, a to lack of satisfaction of a desire. Is that what you're suggesting? It can be, and I'm sure suffering. So, is if you don't have desires that. in the first place, then you can't have suffering. How could you? Could you? But then, how do you get rid of only those only if suffering is 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 strictly and exclusively limited to the dissatisfaction of a desire? But there would be no dissatisfaction of a desire because there would be no desire in the first place. No, but what? I, that's what I'm saying. Only if you define suffering that way. What if what if suffering has nothing to do with desires? What if suffering has to do with something more inherent, like something like like what if it has to do with pumpernickel bread? Then we just get rid of pumpernickel sure. bread, kind of thing. But, no, but no, but it, no, but like <laughs> like like pain feels really bad, right? Like extreme pain feels extremely bad. Physical pain. Um, and and pain can happen. Um, it can happen for like outside of a, a, of a, of a kind of a desire f- model. Right. Right. Yeah. Unless the idea there is that not ex- experiencing pain is a satisfaction of a desire to not experience pain. Is that what we're saying? Well, I would think that the desires and and and, and non desires would arise and fall uh, spontaneously, sort of thing. But I mean, I don't know. Because like instances of pain in our lives, they're well, more. Are we talking physical pain? Physical pain. Like well, suffering actually, I, 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 like actually, I could physical. be talking about even emotional pain or, or, or whatever. These are things that kind of, that kind of, um, I, I think at least for most people, they sort of are peppered throughout our life. They're not the default status quo state of being, right? It's not, it's not, it's not constant pain with these brief moments of relief from pain mm. as being as being pleasure, right? Isn't it? Isn't it more of a of a, 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 a neutral kind of state of neither being in pain nor so a straight line with spikes up and spikes blood. down kind of yeah thing. that kind of thing. So like yeah, the, yeah, it, right. it really depends on how you're addressing the question because certain worldviews would say that the default state of human being is suffering. Like for example, in Christianity, we're like we suffer until we atone for our original sins and then go to heaven where we have eternal bliss. Or, our original sins. The original sin of humanity, right? Yeah. Or like in the Buddhist world, what it was? What is, the, what is the Buddhist world to you, Luke? Well, actually, the no, Buddhist idea me. is to eliminate is to eliminate desire so right. that you eliminate suffering. Yeah. And once you eliminate desire, then you're enlightened. You're you're right. But is it, is it not do. is it not natural as humans to desire something, be it comfort or anything else? Well, that's just it. The Buddhists don't don't think that that's a necessity for the human condition. They think that you achieve nirvana by by uh, by defeating desire. I think. Well, in a well sense, although they wouldn't, I, I don't think they would ever term it in terms of defeating desire. <laughs> but they would say that. They'd well, in a sense, it, it would be the practicing of, of mental control. Well, in a okay. Sense. Well, what about what about hunger? Like, isn't isn't hunger the desire for food and nourishment? How can you like? How is eliminate? How do you eliminate that by eating? How do you eliminate? You, you would eat. Yeah. Yeah. But you would have to constantly eat because the desire keeps coming back. Well, I think the idea there is that that you don't have to desire eating. You you just eat. You eat when you need to eat. Is there a desire to eat? Sure. You don't have to be. Yeah, I think it becomes a, a, a like a semantic argument. The, the there. idea the idea is to not be attached to it. Is like an autonomic response uh, to uh, a okay. desire okay I think we're okay let's let's keep going along these lines here not to get attached to it so how do you not get attached to the fulfillment of a certain desire how do you detach yeah how do you how do you get away from it how do you get away from that natural state of humanity because you know, I, I think. Well, you're saying it's a natural state of humanity. Well, everyone has the desire. fulfillment of a desire. Yeah, I think. I think this that, is that's, something that's, possibly that we're. I th- again, I think it, it 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 comes back to this this distinction of it being a semantic difference whether a desire is actually synonymous with a need, with a, a like a. Yeah, like, like once a, we start a, getting a, into need, I'm going to suggest on an autonomic kind of. Mm-hmm. 
There is no real need. I I, I don't know. What? No, there is a need. There, there are. There needs. is a, a need to to clothe and shelter yourself and to and to ingest but there, food. But there isn't really because you don't need to be alive. I don't need to but eat. That, I don't need to drink. That's the natural biological function. No, but semantically, isn't that the definition of the word need? The those those conditions that 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 must be met, uh, that are that are required for well, it's, an, it's, it's an, an entity to continue being. Yeah. Yeah, it's always accompanied. Uh, it's the, it's a biological <laughs> drive to need. need to survive. I still have a hard time saying need. I, I really do think it's want. It's always want. Oh yeah, that's right. You wanted need to be a subject of a whole. Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I don't believe in need at all. Uh, need is just affiliated to another want. Uh, for example, I. I want to drink water because I want to be alive. I want to continue living, so I guess I'll eat. So if we put you in a closet and deprived you of food and drink and clothing and put you like in a, in like a refrigerated room for hours and hours and days and months on end, would you want or need to survive? I would want. But would that not be your biological drive telling you you want to survive? Yeah, but these things could be overcome. How? I don't know. How do you overcome a biological function? It's not to say that the function wouldn't still be there, but mm-hmm. mentally, I think that you could, yeah, you could overcome it. But I mean, you would also just die. Uh, well, exactly. <laughs> like, the the ultimate overcoming of that biological function would be death. So, mm-hmm. like, your need is what drives you. Well, when you so get when you is, get overheated only... and warm and you sweat, are you sweating because you need to sweat? Or are you sweating because you you talking, want to sweat? There, you're you're excluding the our our mental thinking of it. I like, mean, there's no desire there or anything like that. Yeah, we're, we're well, that's kind about, of the point. That's right? the point I'm making is that there, there's obviously some kind of some kind of need that that is. It's the body's need to cool its own core temperature. I, I I'm just saying that I I don't consider it a need. I can understand that, that you call it a need, well, but regardless I, but of whether or not you consider it to be that, like the biological imperative is for the body but to only cool to itself. continue living. Well, uh, yeah, like the 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 body's need is to survive. It's to propagate its own genome. I think that's that's the biological. But I don't. Imperative. I don't need to go out and propagate my genome. I don't need to go out and have a baby. Consciously, you may not me. think you need that, but your genes do. Like your DNA needs to propagate. How do you itself. define need if it's well, not if well, it's I, not uh, inherently attached to the propagation of? If you're asking how uh, I define uh, need, I, being, def- you know, I define like survival need as want. Or, but need and want are separate. Things that are required for for continued living or continued existence. Right. Are those equivalent to wants? Well, I consider them to be only because I'm I'm wanting to live. But no, so, like regardless of whether or not you consciously want to live, your body needs to. It, it drives need to. The body needs the the needs of the body drive your conscious want to survive. The body is completely disposable. For the body to be a concept to exist, it needs something. Oh yes, and it's it imperative. Yes, is survival for to have existence for it continue to, be, kind to of exist thing. in the first like place. Like I, I am saying, it, we don't need to be alive. That that is what I'm declaring here. Yeah. Well. Okay. What What do you mean by we don't need to be alive? So the as oh, in, hold on. What, what do you need? What do you mean by we do not need to be alive? We don't need to be alive. What do you? You're, that's circular <laughs> logic. What do you mean by that? I mean that we do not need to continue. It is not a need. It is a desire to continue. We desire to continue living. We desire life. We desire being. I guess we could say. Like you may, you may think that. Like consciously, you might think that. But the like. I think on a subjective level, I get what you're saying. Like, like, like. There's in our in our consciousness, we have a subjective experience. It's the subjective uh, which, interpretation which, in, which involves of... which involves a, a desire to continue living. Yeah, but yeah. that's but that's like a. Um, it's, it's your interpretation. It's not, not, of not spontaneous, what's... but what's that other word? Uh, like an emergent. Emergent. It's the it's emergent, emergent subjective interpretation of emergent, what's going on uh, biologically. Uh, um, state of consciousness, right? The the that. That comes out of just the idea that uh, something something that exists uh, 
continues to exist and resists uh, resists like uh, the the termination of its existence. Mm-hmm. Like what you experience as a want to survive is your interpretation of your biological your body's biological functions. You know, your body will drive you to want that because it needs to propagate itself. It need the body needs to keep on going. That's at, like at its core. That that's what we're what we're designed to do is to pass on our genetics. You know, when a when a, a, a flower closes and opens to protect itself, mm-hmm. like we know that there's no neurology there that constitutes a consciousness that I'm not sure. Uh, because I'm, I'm that going to quali- say that qualifies possible. for that concept of conscious wanting, desiring. Hold on a second. Let's. I, I like where this is going. You're about to say that you believe something about consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. It is thing. possible that, that a flower is conscious. Okay. That that it actually is experiencing desire. I don't know. I don't know if if desire is. Uh, I think that consciousness but can exist, but it's doing without... things to protect itself yeah. from the termination Which of its would own suggest existence. Consciousness? No, no. It suggests, it suggests need. It's just, it suggests need, need to continue. It's yeah, its own imperative to continue exi- its own existence. There's no desire there. It just does. Yeah. And as far as we can tell, if we apply that to the rest of the universe, the universe itself just does it just continues right there's we don't have any evidence to suggest that a conscious so, want so how so is how this how is like the basic underpinning for 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 why the the conservative christians like their flower is closing think they're closing in reaction to think that that the words happy holidays uh, 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 need to be fought it needs to survive <laughs> it has a desire to survive like the flower, yeah. Like, is it a, is it an autonomic thing that uh, that to to protect their own existence kind of deal? Like, they it's well, their yeah. own imperative, yeah. their identity to, to rebel against more inclusive ideas. Yeah, maybe. Is it just that it it lacks automatic, autonomic it lacks complex? the long term vision to see itself existing in conjunction with other things with with, with competing uh, 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 yeah 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 uh, systems of, of thought and, uh, a and, self-defense. and cultures it could be a, it's, a, it's a cultural self defense mechanism a cultural self defense me- mechanism it could be like it, it, you know ideas want to i guess but this again discounts the the uh, or ignores the 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 uh, deliberate carpet bag or uh, or sandbagging that's being done by I was uh, all interested to find out what carpet bagging was. <laughs> no, Sorry. carpet. Uh, a carpet bagger <laughs> is someone is, is like bags carpets. Like let's let's say uh, uh, let's say you've got this small town uh, that's uh, that's got like um, uh, that's got like a mayoral election coming up, and uh, one guy is kind of representing a liberal progressive idea. But they've got nobody in that town that's progress- that's presenting themselves to represent the, 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 the group or the party or the 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 uh, the agenda or the perspective of the conservative side of things, and so a party might like helicopter in some uh, some some dude to represent the conservative side of stuff, but he he has nothing to do with that municipality. That guy's a carpetbagger. Hmm. I see. Their emergency bailout system, pretty much. Yeah, it's somebody who's not authentically. The ringer. It's a ringer. Who's yeah? He's somebody who's not authentically part of that community. Um, there's no reason to think he's he's best suited to represent that locality. He has nothing to do with them, but he's dropped in there and and he's presented as if he is of them and for them. He's the ringer. Yeah, he's that's a carpetbagger. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And a, and sandbagging is is kind of a similar idea, I think, where it's about it's a it's again about like a kind of concept of inauthenticity, uh, where um, where the the seeds of an idea and an agenda are planted uh, not uh, uh, not by like the grassroots, but by like an outside. 
an outside uh, group or whatever that 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 wants that place to, to, to actually think these things, right? So so uh, it, it, it's it's just in opposition to the idea of something spontaneously emerging out of a, a, a social grouping. Mm. It's something that's actually implanted, you know? It's in, in insected. They inject an outside that's, force to, that's to protect the, like, the original idea from outside yeah. influence. So there's, there's evidence to say that, that the war on Christmas idea is a completely sandbagged idea. Yeah. Which, you know... By, you by know. elites. Who, uh-huh. uh, That's yeah. where the evidence tends to point. Well, right. they, they, they see the, the status quo of Christianity and, and therefore Christmas being the predominant idea within society. And they, they view outside kind of... Not even rebellion against that, but like they change... They see change as a direct attack, so they interject something like, "We're people are secularists so, so and the progressives is, are trying to destroy Christmas." The thing is, as I'm, I'm, that sandbagging idea. Yeah. And 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 uh, um, uh, uh, an outside kind of coordinated interest can exploit uh, that that slot that exists in in any natural kind of system uh, um, uh, for self-defense or whatever you know so, so so this idea of a war on Christmas can can actually stick with a, with a group of, uh, of, of people because it fits into that natural uh, idea of um, not idea but that, that that natural state of wanting to protect itself mm-hmm. looking for looking for threats and 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 needing or, or desiring to continue seeing threats you know? where there are none you know because they're they're so intent on they be, they want to protect it they want to protect the idea so badly that they see any kind of hint I think of, this is of, actually a good argument for why need exists they need why, to why you have why you have why you have to concede that need exists because it can be exploited by an outside force. Need. So you're saying I, I need to? No, I'm. <laughs> I need to acknowledge this right now. No, no, no. But la, I'm, la, 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 I'm, la, I'm la, making la, an la. argument, and I'm ho- I'm hoping <laughs> this is this is going to be compelling to you. Uh, it seems like need exists because somebody else can manipulate can manipulate you by way of need, exploiting that need by way of exploiting. That that concept yeah. of need, but but you could easily replace the By word need it with and want, and I don't think you necessarily can though, because the need is is because you're exploiting like a subconscious kind. It's of subcon- thing, right? It's a re- it's a in itself a reflex or a non yeah. It's in a way a reflex like the it, it, it's, it's, it's irrelevant to your conscious re- experience. Right. Reflexes so the, the, no, hold on. The, the need emerges reflexively against an outside influence. I still and have a hard time calling it need because need okay. is essential. Uh, and and all mm-hmm. these things can can change and and be manipulated like you're saying and and be different things. But terms like essential are they inherently relative? And uh, this um, goes back to the idea of free will. Kind of conditional upon it, it goes so back it like, goes like, like one thing needs something else. Yeah. Like it, 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 it goes. To, it's we had, going on to we had a discussion it. about free will a long time, like last year at some point, right? Right before. Y'all need to go back and check out our other episodes. They were great. This would have been episode. I don't know. Episode, it was like I episode don't know. six or something. Something like six. That. If it's not but, six, go for seven. But like, if if we can't, if we if we're un- <laughs> if if we are unconscious, lucky number seven of the majority of things that enter our mind, including needs, and we simply interpret that as want. Right, like we, we mm. it's happening at the back of our, like they just emerge spontaneously. Needs yeah. emerge then spontaneously, and will? we interpret yeah. them as being wants and desires. But these are things that either like the brain needs to survive, or the brain the brain needs in order to satisfy some innate desire. These are just things that are built into our our being. They're not. Yes, yes, and no. I, I'm not sure. I still, I still can't. Uh, I, I still can't really understand that it's need. It's still always going to be want to me, regardless of what you. Well, what okay, you guys but say. how do you? De- Where's I the think, proof? I think for want is Where's an inherently conscious. How do you? How do you define yeah, yeah, want? Sure. Then how do you define want? 
I think we need to establish common ground here. How do you define want? Don't let me define words. You guys are better at that kind of stuff. How, how would you define want? I'm asking you because uh, you're the one asserting that want is necessarily super... I, like, I super just don't see how it's need because it always just leads back to the want well, to survive. Well, that's what we need to determine. Right? What, do you dis what do you define as want then? In order to defend your argument, you need to have a definition of your word want. So what, the desire to, to acquire something, the desire to have something, the desire to... Sure, and where do, they, where do these the desires come from, fundamentally? Uh, where do they not come from? They like, come like, from, like do the you, matrix of Is it of your mind free will kind of that thing. chooses to desire something, or... Uh, I, are, think, I think that could be the case. Do you have no other have choice kind of... than to want certain things... That's that our the question. Needs. Do you have no other choice but to need certain things? I think that ultimately you can control the choice. But how? That, because if, if again, no, again, but fundamentally, <laughs> if if most of our actions, you know, when you're come, drowning, if most of our actions come from an unconscious thing happening that we're not aware they, of. They do, yes. How can you, know you change you, but, that? Well, very gradually and very slowly. It's not as if we can suddenly become aware of our full unconscious, but if we delve into it, we can get to know it. But, I mean, we don't know ourselves to that extent. Like, uh... But I think, isn't something like 98% of stuff happens in our unconscious? Could be, I don't know. I could be totally off base with that, but like it's some ridiculous amount of stuff that happens How? without us that's knowing like, about. That's like saying like uh, the best way to die is that sounds drowning. Like a made up statistic. You know? like, uh, How would you know? Forty-four you know? percent of people <laughs> know that. Forty-four. Forty-four percent. It's a Simpsons thing. Forty-four. Forty-four percent. Simpsons quote. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. But like, like you, I think it, it's it's important to understand what you mean by want versus need. If you can't define well, want, the, then... the, uh, all I'm defining there is that the difference between need and want is need suggests it's essential. Right. Essential for what? A want. <laughs> Not necessarily. Like it, I think I think the difference between need and want is that a want is something that you are free to not want. Like I a want, need is something that you just you just you just do it just you're does. not you're not able to choose not to want it like I want you know what I mean that's a need like well, I, I need water I want juice but I what I need to survive is a drink of water but it's always traced back to that survival thing like that that's where it comes I'm using, it okay, comes back to forgetting that. let's forget about the survival thing and change the well, example can you forget Hold about on. that let's let's forget <laughs> let's let's forget let's the just example. forget about staying alive now and listen to this all right let's go. So in terms of need, I need to, I need my core temperature to not be, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off with my no, I just, giggling I at the specificity of this example. I okay, well, you were, you were going to talk no, survival I forget, stuff I and how I was going. You, you need to You stay. didn't expect someone to giggle at it? No, I just, I don't know where I was going. My corporate temperature. Like, what I what I mean is that we can ninety eight degrees. <laughs> the need. I think you were on the Ooh, baby. Ago. The need is 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 affiliated to a desired uh, outcome. Desired outcome. The need. I need to drink. I think need to is stay alive. no need is independent of desire. Need is a is a it's an imperative. Need is something that drives you towards something. You don't necessarily have to want the things that you need. The satisfaction well, of needs on. enables you to desire. So things. we may just be and speaking in terms of unconsciousness of here. Like, for example, it may be unconscious that we want to be alive, and so therefore we call it a need. But I still see it as a want, even if it's unconscious. Well, hmm. what do you? So, what was your definition of want again? I don't. I, don't, I sorry, think I, I evaded. I avoided that. You totally evaded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like we we that night, we need to establish that need to establish that. Sorry, need. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. It's it's affiliated to a desired outcome, um, but a want. What am I defining here? The word want. What like according to your argument, what is it that you mean by want? Yeah, how would you define want? Well, that's uh, at its core what what you have to define, right? But like you're if, always if just you're, using no, another if you're term. If you're associating want to need, you have to define what you mean by want. Well, the only, the only separation there that I was defining was that that need suggests it's essential. Want suggests it's not essential. 
Yeah. But it's something desired for some sort of... Uh, You're kind of asserting of that everything is arbitrary. Am I? I think so. I, I think it's know. almost a nihilistic point. Is it? Yeah. Which is fine. Is it? Yeah. Am I, am I a nihilist? Is that what just Maybe happened? you're a little bit nihilist. <laughs> you have a solipsism. We can't know anything I don't know about solipsism. Well, we can't know anything for certain. Is that also something that uh, you might might argue for? Sure, yeah. 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 So a bit of a solipsist. Possibly, but I would Not like a hard solipsist, but like some solipsism in there. I'm mushy. I'm mushy in the middle. Doesn't, <laughs> Crunchy around doesn't the solipsism connote uh, some kind of uh, egoism? That, uh, not necessarily. I don't. I don't think so. Like you, you, we can't know anything for certain because how can you prove you're not a brain of that? Right, but 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 right. but but, it, but that idea of a brain in a vat means that everything is about your your okay, conscious yeah, experience, yeah, your yes, own brain. You would right. have to read like the entire universe is your, your own, own brain. Yeah. Like, that's like the ultimate egoism. Isn't right. It? Okay. Yeah. In that way, I, sure. I, that like solipsism in its yeah. etymology, it's got the soul there. Right. So no, I understand now. Yeah. 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 But yes, I don't right. think the necessarily universe is nihilism brain. is solipsistic. No, no, I'm not. Like maybe your perspective, Luke, is a bit of solipsism I, I thrown don't, in with. I nihilism. don't think I'm actually nihilistic. Uh, okay. Uh, I I think I do have a thing. <laughs> <laughs> a thing. I have a thing. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. How did the, we we certainly went way off course with this conversation? Yeah, holy cow. <laughs> But still, I have a very hard time with this idea of need. I really do just feel it's uh, yeah. it's it's a, it's want. Like I, I uh -huh. want to be alive. There's no difference between need and want. Want is just a kind of uh, or need is just a kind of want. Yeah, I I disagree. I still disagree with that because like if, if because we... because you're suggesting I want to be alive. No, I'm suggesting you need to be like consciously. You may think you want to be alive. But how do I need to be alive? Because your body will crave the things th that Want. will allow it to no. Because the needs of the body out the needs of the body outweigh the needs of the mind. Well, and what, I, what I'm suggesting is that uh, let's say I go into a deep uh, I go into a deep state of meditation. I, I love can, the Spock. I sparked uh, I sparked that one. Epistemological Spock going yeah. on here. <laughs> the the, your, the needs of your body will drive you to seek out the things it needs to survive conscious or not right if you're if you're dying of thirst you will seek out that drink of water mm -hmm. the needs of the body outweigh, outweigh the, the wants, wants of, of the, the mind. mind i fucking love that <laughs> bam <motherfucker>. next t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> um i i still just see i i mean really the, the base the base there is that desire to continue living it's, it's not about desire it's not about desire. The, I don't see how it's not. Consciously, you made it. You might interpret that as desire, but your body, the impair, the biological imperative, will drive you to seek out that which it needs now, to survive. Now, say I go into a, a deep state of meditation. Go ahead. All right. Meditate the there, fuck out of your body. And, and I'm meditating. And I'm meditating. No, okay. And I'm starving. Yeah, and I'm right. thirsty. You'll die. You will die. Absolutely, I will die. So the, your ne your body's need will drive. You well, to seek it's, it out. Like, it's assuming that, that that I'm just this body. You it, are. Like what that. else is there? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not wanting. No, it, it so is can, just wanting. Can this be media. like reduced to like as simple a concept as uh, as like conceiving uh, of of things being distinct from each other? Like this bottle is different from this microphone. Yeah. Right. The, the, like, like there's a phenomenon going on here where me and you can agree and we can perceive that this is separate from this microphone. I'm not going to try and fill this microphone with whiskey. We're out of whiskey. Totally going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle though. You know what I mean? I do have a hard time so, with this. I know and you. I, I know you do. I don't yeah. necessarily see them as being all that separate. No, but okay, you. Please. No, but so on some on some Pragmatic like theoretical way. kind of kind of intellectual level. You like to toy with these ideas of the, the interconnectedness of things. And maybe and at a fundamental level that's true, but at, 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 some, at, some other, at some other level of life experience, you know not to try and fill this microphone with, with whiskey. Right. You know that the whiskey is probably better to go in this bottle. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we live, whether right? or not you like mm -hmm. it, pragmatically, so, we live in a reality where there is distinct separateness between subject and object 
right? That you are not the bottle. You're not going to fill your brain with whiskey because you are not that bottle of whiskey that is now empty, right? Fundamentally, we operate within a reality in which we have to make this. We have to operate with the assumption that there is a separation between different objects, right? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Well, you, you said have to in there, so you lost me right away. Okay, so... <laughs> we don't have to do any of these things. So... But we are. Okay, so fill... And we can. So fill the microphone with whiskey. That won't work. It'll Why ruin, not? It'll ruin the microphone. It, why? why? Because the microphone is distinct from the bottle. It well, won't ruin the bottle. Could, could I not say that it is a part of, and that's the part that you pour whiskey into, and this is the part that you right, do not pour? Right, but parts are distinct from each other. Parts can be distinguishable well, things. My hand does this, and my foot does another thing. Right, right. right. So you're not going to try and, um, and, 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 and cup a handful of, uh, of uh, water with your foot. You're going to try and do that with your hand. Right, because you know that these things are different. They're, but they're... if you're if you're using that as an argument against you being separate from your body, I think that's <clears throat> that's that's wrong, because you know it, they may be different parts of your body, but they're still your body. Right, your brain is still a part of your body. Your consciousness, being an emergent aspect of your brain, is still part of your body, since your brain is again part of that same distinct thing. This is all assuming that uh, that that uh, this is this is the only moment and that it's defined in a linear fashion kind of thing. So, for well, example, I, no, that that's a separate argument. Why why is why is it necessary for things to be distinct in time for you to, for objects objects to be distinct from one another? Well, what what if? No, I, no, 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 also... no, 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 why, no. Why, why is it necessary for things to be distinct from one another? You lost me with necessary. <laughs> but, I... okay, why, why does, the, why... Necessary, required, need, these are all, like, related terms. Do you have a problem with all of those terms? Or no, just I, the, I, I just have a problem need. with it now because we're, we're, we're talking Right, conceptually. About it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So conceptually... Where was I going? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know, and I and I and I don't know how I would answer these uh, these these questions. Well, that that's where I that's where I have a problem with your argument because, like, well, if, I, you're, if, you're, if you're going to assert a position, you need to be able to defend it, right? You need to be able to say, well, I believe this because I I believe X because of Y, and if you can't define Y, your I position. I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm believing something. I'm just not necessarily believing the other thing. What do you mean? I, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to if, if you're going to assert a position, for example, there's no. I don't feel like I'm asserting though. Like really, this is all coming down to the to the need and the want. Sure. So so, you, so we're trying but to. But you're you're asserting that there is no distinction between need and want. That's right. So you're asserting a position. So you need to be able to defend it. Why is there no distinction between well, need and want? Because. You're assuming that I'm not assuming anything. You are assuming. No, no. You're assuming no, no. that there is a separation no, 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 between no, no. want and no, need. No, I'm not asserting anything. I'm questioning but your you're position. Saying, you're saying no, no, no. No. As if, I, as if the no, no, no. Is a yes, yes, yes. No, no. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm questioning your position. Okay. What is it that drives? Or what is it that? What's at the foundation of your belief that there is no distinction between need and want? Or that there, was that it? Or that like? Well, sure, and and all it is is that uh, what I'm suggesting is that ultimately, all needs trace back to a desire to continue living. Okay, why do you believe that? I don't care what you believe. I care about why you believe it. What are the steps that led you to to that conclusion? Well, I I, I guess I'm just looking at the the lineage of of. of what we call needs, and it always traces back to a desire to continue living. Okay. I, again, it's not a, a desire to continue living. It's a biological imperative to continue living. I understand. I understand. But what I'm what saying is... What you interpret is... as desire is your, your consciousness giving definition to that biological imperative. Uh-huh. Right? It's not you saying, I want to live. But what I'm what I'm suggesting is I I could starve to death I could not drink water 
and I would die. Yeah. But need is an inherently relative term. Yeah. That it is relative. That automatically it's about uh, what is required for something to continue to be. And what I'm suggesting is. It's inherently relative to maybe it is to, nihilistic in the sense the, the, that I don't. I, I guess I am kind of on on the villain side in these in these superhero movies where they're going. Let's just annihilate the whole, the entire universe. Well, what's the problem? And I'm kind of going. Yeah. yeah well, what is the problem? <laughs> like uh, there is no need to be alive. It's not need. It's just it's just a word. No, but need is a word. That uh, that has a meaning within it's, the circumstances right. and, and that it's we the relation it's the to the continuation. We, it's the label we give to that imperative. The imperative of existence. Sure. Yeah. 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 So the imperative is existence. Yeah, but that's that's what language is. Language is about labels for yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. for 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 things, things that are that are true in particular well, well, true. Uh, circumstances. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah, it, it is objectively true that biological things for what will we understand to, to be true existing. about certain circumstances. Yeah. No, exactly. Sorry. Uh, I, uh, no, 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 no. Like it, it, it is objectively true that biological entities will seek to continue existing. So the label we give to that is the need to exist. Yeah. The, the need. word need. That's the label. So, a flower. We're on Christmas. A, a, a flower needs Christ to exist. Wait, what? <laughs> Crystal armists. So you're saying that a flower has a need? The flower, sure. <laughs> so it has needs? Not consciously. Okay. But the label we give to it is its need to continue existing. So we've, so in order we've to, suggested In order that for it the flower to, to fulfill its need to exist, it will draw in sunlight, it will draw in moisture from the ground, it will draw in nutrients from the soil to satisfy its need to continue existing. It'll keep itself from getting damaged by closing up. Yeah. To continue its need to exist. I guess I just don't call that need. What I do you call, call that? that uh, uh, well, I, I don't it necessarily... Seems like it's, it's entirely a semantic... Problem. Does the flower yeah, have yeah. a want? I, I don't think it has a need or a want. Does what does it, it have? Except for what we're attributing to okay, it. Okay, right? then what, is it, what does it have? Is the flower desiring? Yeah, you're right, though, that a flower may be desiring. Uh, I'm like, right? Like, like, I, did I say that? Yeah, yeah, I didn't yep, say that. Yep, you said that. <laughs> Jill has just declared that flowers have. Well, desires. you know what? I I think to some, I think you're right to some extent because we're, we got to this place. If I may, we got to this place by trying to analyze what's happening to uh, a certain demographic that that sees anything other than the words, the two words, Merry exclusive Christmas. two words. Merry Christmas at this time of year. Right, that, that They see that as a, th a, 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 as a thwarting of their needs, yeah, yeah. right? And we see this idea of, of, of that demographic's need as something like an emergent, like sort of spontaneous emergent uh, thing, right? Because they don't necessarily, or we don't necessarily think consciously that this is what's, that this is what's causing People to say that Happy Holidays is threatening uh, the existence of, uh, of of conservative Christians or whatever. Did I even make a complete sentence? No, I think, that, so. yeah, I think you're getting somewhere with that. But uh, like, I think that's where we can draw the distinction because to them, it isn't it isn't a need to continue existing. There's no fundamental reason for them to continue propagating the idea of. Christmas and Christianity as a thing unto itself. It's a desire to to stop the dismantling of their worldview. It isn't it's it's not fundamental to them. Right? It's them wanting to But in order for them to perceive the words happy holidays as a threat right. to them, as a persecution to them, mm -hmm. they have to be experiencing some kind of like 
uh, need to survive and and uh, defensiveness. But I, I, yeah, uh, sh- to sure. Yeah, survival. but I don't. Th- I don't think it's a natural reaction to in this case. I think right. it's more of an ingrained thing. Now we're back to the sandbagging. Now we're back to sandbagging. Exactly. Like it, it's something that's been driven into their consciousness. Well, in that sense, though, it, it having been driven but into no, the consciousness, they are very much like the flower. No, no, that, no, 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 no. That the, needs the, to be watered. The difference is. Things. The difference is. Yeah. The the flower hasn't had that thing driven into it. It's part of its imperative. Well, it has for the had, Christian. It has had the, no, the thing the, driven no, into it because it's, it's existed. No, so it's the, obviously no had it. for the Christian alarmist <laughs> fighting against the the happy, happy holidays thing. Yeah. That's indoctrination, right. and that's something that can be overcome. You can't overcome a need. You cannot overcome a biological imperative. Mm-hmm. And that's where the distinction between but you're saying you can't. Water. You're right that but you they're can't making overcome some, it. But they're making some kind of misattribution or something where they they perceive a threat to their need. And you know, there's a threat. To misattribution their is the key word there. Yeah. So they fear their own destruction in whatever form that they've created themselves sure. to be, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then then there's an exploitation of of the. The, the the natural needs for things that exist have sort of a natural uh, 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 there, there's like natural forces of continuation of the prop of, of, of themselves yeah right of anything that exists it's like a kind of uh, Newtonian kind of mm. you know things in motion will remain in motion un- until acted upon to, to, to action the, reaction that kind of stuff have, have we sort of declared that that ex- existence needs to be so like is 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 like it's is needs to be is well I guess it depends on what level you're speaking okay. well I guess I'm, I'm speaking at the most fundamental at like, the most fundamental the level of, okay if you're, if, at the most fundamental level particles and atoms exist the way they are because of laws that the laws of, of physics right that's that's what makes the universe the way it is, and you can't change that, right? You cannot change the laws of uh, you can't change the laws of physics. They're the laws of physics for a reason. They're laws. At the you're, if you're talking about the most fundamental level, that's the way it is, right? Well, we'll have to c- continue this uh, want and need discussion some of the time. Yeah. I think there. Dinner is about to be served here yeah. on our Christmas special episode live from Jill's house. Um, so we are it's live. To, even We're though you're listening to a recording of this. We're recorded live at Jill's house <laughs> with our uh, peanut gallery chuckling in the corner. Our lovely We're about to sacrifice lovely, a Christmas bird <laughs> to our uh, to our secular stomachs. Merry existential Christmas. Merry <laughs> existential Christmas to all of our listeners out there on episode 30. Uh, Happy we'll, New Year, everybody. We'll pick this up again, I'm sure, in the new year. But for now... Uh, I guess uh, this has been Critical Junction episode 30. I'm Mark. I'm uh, Luke because I need to be. (laughs) I'm Jill because I want to be Jill. As always, thanks for listening, and we need to catch you again next time.